Hey everybody, this is Birch, and uh, I'm going to critique for a moment the um, Jed McKay Avengers run. So I, I want to put this in a little bit of context as to why I'm doing this and kind of what's in my mind. So the, um, the, you know, Jed McKay came on to the Avengers following Jason Aaron. And, uh, you know, I, I have a sense of, of kind of behind the scenes. We've seen the like, Reward who is managing the Avengers line. It's gone over the X-Men and there's been a shuffling going up. And, you know, there's, the Avengers is bit has been is been is been has been a title that is important to Marvel, obviously from the movies, and they've been somewhat dysfunctional about the Avengers, where they want to tie it to the movies, but then they want to play around with some other Avengers. And they, like they, it seems to be a bit of a struggle right now. It's kind of like in the middle, where they want to have Captain Marvel there, and they want to have the uh, you know Falcon, Captain America. And Scarlet Witch, so they're, they're wanting to kind of be familiar to the um, MCU, but then they've also got kind of uh, Black Panther, who's alive, obviously in the comics and dead in the in the movies, or at least the T'Challa version is. Um, you got the Vision there, so th th it's it's got a kind of a it's 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 in a weird middle state. And um, Jed McKay, it one of the things that I don't know if Marvel fully realizes this, and if there's any kind of PR department or how do you how do you solve this messaging? I know there's a, there's a handful of people, I could probably more than a handful of people at Marvel who listen to this show on a regular basis because they get mails and other things about it. Um, one of the things that I think Marvel needs to do is they need to recognize what is um, narrative that they're in control of and narrative they're not in control of. And what that means is, you know, there's a feeling that Marvel is scrambling. If you're at the retail level or the customer level, be the customer meaning the people buying the comics, not Marvel's customer, the shops. Um, there is a feeling that Marvel's kind of lost and a little dysfunctional, and that they're they're not landing, you know what they're not landing anything. Um, anyway, that is uh, that is that has been Marvel's challenge, and. I, Marvel, I think, does not agree. They feel like everything's coming on all cylinders, and they're number one publisher. So it makes a little bit of sense that they would feel that way. But the outside perception is that it's dysfunctional, and down to the customer level. And so, including the Avengers, the Avengers run has gotten off to a understated start, which is a shame. And I'll get to it in a minute. But the general feeling is that Jed McKay is a transitionary writer. Now, part of the reason for that is that Marvel hasn't necessarily built up McKay as one of their core people. They generally do a little bit more fanfare. Jason Aaron, they put a little bit more momentum for. And um, this run didn't launch with like the big like hollow foil number one. Like it was a number one relaunch, but it felt like a much softer number one relaunch than what Marvel usually does for especially for their premier titles like the Avengers. So. When Marvel does this, typically it's a sign, and I know a ton of retailers feel this way, and again, people at Marvel, when you're listening to this right now, understand that whether you agree with what I'm saying or not is a bit irrelevant. I'm telling you what retailers think. These are the people who order your books, and hopefully you care what the customers think as well, but they also think this. The belief here is that Avengers by Jed McKay, is temporary, that it's going to last like 12 issues or so, and then it's going to uh, be handed over to a you know bigger name writer, and you're going to relaunch this again. Marvel has been doing this in fairness. They put some of their kind of marquee titles in the hands of uh, talent they don't necessarily promote, and then they uh, relaunch shortly thereafter, and, and you know it, it enters into a cycle of continual you know death and rebirth from the book. Um, so, you know, I think that what we have here is a case where if you actually have been reading the Avengers, it's not bad. I think Jed McKay has been doing it an okay job. Um, and it, it borders on being a great job. So of the characters and how they're gelling together, it feels like Jed McKay is, uh, is trying to line up a bunch of big things He's got Kang involved. There's the, you know, the endless city that they're now floating around on. Um, it's a bunch of big concept stuff. And in some cases, it does feel like he's um, he's copying 
to some extent, uh, Jason Aaron uh, just kind of throw wild concepts on the wall and sees what sticks. You know, the Avengers were living in a dead husk of a celestial. Um, you know, in the in the previous run, now they're living in a sentient ship that. We're all just going to pretend that Louise Simonson's X Factor is uh, not a thing, I guess. But okay. Uh, but anyway, it's not a bad run. It it needs to slow itself down a little bit and have the Avengers, which you rarely say about Marvel Comics these days. But need, we need to have an issue to the the Avengers head into New York and you know the Wrecking Crew is messing things up and the Avengers have to take care of it. They need they need like an an issue for that, and then maybe you know they need to. Every now, you know, transition to, oh, no, the Serpent Society is doing some shit. And clearly the Avengers are overpowered for this. But, you know, still they poison the water. So the Avengers have to figure it out. I don't You know, they, they just basically need to deal with some threats that feel more like villains and people that we know. Uh, so far, uh, Jed McKay has had kind of three groups come at them. Um, they, uh, you know, the in, in these, what the... I, Okay, I've forgotten what the uh, the the tribune the tribunal era like. There's there's this. Yeah, I'm not going to remember it. I, I apologize, by the way. I've I've read all these issues closely. Um, tribunary events. I sorry. Please, somebody in the comments, help me out. Anyway, um, but we've had like a, a villain group comprised of brand new villains that we haven't seen before. Then we briefly got Nightmare, um, and then we got some more villains that Jed McKay introduced. And all these the characters are interesting. Like the villains are do seem villainous, and they're doing big villainous things, and they don't seem bad. Like it, it's not bad, but you know, we it's the Avengers, and it's a book that's been around for a long time. So we do need to have at least a couple things come in here where you know readers of the comic recognize events. But if you, but unfortunately, and this is the bit of advice I'd give to this run is you've got some decent work going on. Feels a little rushed. Feels a little bit like throwing stuff at the wall. So, you know, some spacing. But what it feels like most of all is that Marvel has given Jed McKay a 12-issue run with the promise that if it does okay, they'll give him another 12 issues. That's what this feels like. And I can't confirm one way or another whether that's true, that is what's happening, or if, um, you know, it's, it's just that's the vibe it's giving off. If it's true, well, then Marvel just needs to suck it up, put a ring on it, and just give Jed McKay the money, which is not a lot of money, to just, you know, really go all in on like a three-year plan. When, um, you know, when we talked to Jim Zub over there doing Conan, we heard that they wanted him to focus on doing a really good book, and they wanted him locked up for a long period of time. That's what he said. And, you know... That's exactly the message right now. Marvel should be sending Jed McKay. His book has been pretty good. I think it's better than you know what he did with Doctor Strange and and some you know I think it's better than his Moon Knight run in terms of just being solid. But it does read like this is a you know it's a dating exercise versus a marriage exercise. And when you're doing the Avengers or frankly the X Men or the Fantastic Four or Spider Man. The, the, the vibe you need to be giving off to your customers is we're in this for the long haul. We trust our creative team. We like them and, you know, we're sticking with it. That's what, that's exactly what the comic should feel like. And unfortunately, Marvel as a whole doesn't really feel that way, except by the way, and I, I have not been a huge fan of Zeb Wells and the amazing Spider-Man run. It feels like Marvel has, you know, they're basically giving off the sense that Zeb is going to be with the title for a long time. They're committed to this run. They're going for it. Now, for a lot of you who don't like the Paul MJ relationship, that sucks. The fact that we're in that state, but hopefully you, you, you know, you would admit it's better to give the customers a sense of, you know, longevity. My feeling is that Marvel has probably committed to Jed McKay a longer run, but they're in this state where they're having to dig themselves out of a hole, and uh, as a result, they're sending a message that you know, hey, we're we're you know, this 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 could be relaunched in a year. So 
this is advice for Marvel. I don't expect anybody to follow it, but he, but whatever. Marvel needs to put out a press release or a message that basically says, I, I would do it this way. I would do two things. I would put a press release that says, you know, we're really excited about what Jed McKay has done for the Avengers, and this is only the beginning. That's the words they need to use. You know, Jed has amazing plans for the next several years of the Avengers, and you won't believe what he's building up to in 2027. I right, fuck it. Just put a date out there into the future. Just go for it. Then what I would do, because I think we're getting close to issue 12, I would put out a celebration of one year on this title, which normally I don't go for these kinds of gimmicks, but I would do this. I would do a, we're going to do a double-sized, you know, big blowout fight of the Avengers who have to fight, I, who knows, uh, the, the Red Skull. Fuck it, we always just drag him out when we want to do something, but whatever. Some massive, massive threat. The Avengers are going to have to really go for it, and it's a special double-sized issue celebrating the first year and serving as a springboard for the next three to four years of Avengers stories. Now, even if Marvel is unclear about whether Jed McKay is going to be on the book six months from now, I would do it anyway. Lie your ass off to your customers and just say, say, you know, we're all in. You know, if, if Jed decides to leave or you don't commit or whatever the fuck you're going to do, you can always come back later and go, oh, man, plans change. Fuck, I don't know. Just do it. That would be the smartest thing you can do. Because right now, I think you have a writer on this book introducing some interesting things. Our team's not bad. Captain Marvel is being written in an effective way. Um, that's a character you want to get over. Uh, you, you've got some good things going. So, you know, let him cook. Let, let some good things actually happen with this book. That's how you build longevity. Everything I just said, by the way, is true for Spider-Man, X-Men, Thor, uh, Fantastic Four, Justice League, Green Lantern, Superman, Batman. All of that is true. But if you look around right now, and this would be the thing to kind of, you know, test you on. I'm curious what you put in the comments. How many titles right now feel like the company, the publisher, is invested in the creative team and planning for the long haul? For me, that's two books. It's only two right now across both of the big two. Batman with Chip Zdarsky and Spider-Man with Zeb Wells. Those are the two books where it feels like the publisher is sending a message or at least hinting that they're in it for a long haul. Everything else feels like it could very easily be rebooted and canceled in the next three months and, you know, shit happens. Totally, totally believe it. Superman's going through a bunch of changes right now. Green Lantern I, easily could be rebooted. Flash, uh, Wonder Woman. I know Tom King's on this thing, but uh, what? put it this way. Who would it shock you? Which titles would it shock you if they sent out a release saying, um, the conclusion of the run, which is paving the way for the new creative team in a couple months? Any titles? Again, Nick Lowe and the Spider-Man office have signaled that Zeb Wells is with us for a while. Um, DC has signaled that Zdarsky has got a couple more things up his sleeve. He's going to do some more tricks. They've signaled all of this. Um, other than that, I think anything goes. Anyway, that's my thought. If you're not reading the, the Jed McKay Avengers, I'm not recommending this as the most amazing book ever. It's not. But it is solid. He's putting in solid work. The characters are okay. He's doing some interesting stuff over there. It's not bad. And when you read it, you get the feel like you get the kind of the feeling of like, man, if you just if they just did a couple small tweaks here, this would be a very, very strong run. You know, Hickman had a really good run of the Avengers. Uh, Bendis had a good run of the Avengers. I know that probably triggers a lot of you, but he did. He did he had a run of the Avengers. It was well selling. It locked in. He got some big things done. It got silly toward the end, but but he had a he had a known run for the Avengers. And Hickman followed him, and he had a big run for the Avengers. And then Jason Aaron came in. Wait, is that right? I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. No, Mark Wade was in there. That's right. Mark Wade was in there in a very forgettable run of the Avengers. Never really went anywhere. 
And then uh, Jason Aaron came in and it just became goofball Avengers. And now we've got Jed McKay. And Jed McKay, ha- it, there is, it, it has what it takes to be big. But the publisher needs to do a couple small things to really sink it home. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for listening.